Good morning, beautiful people. I hope that you are all doing well this beautiful Sabbath morning. I hope that you are having a wonderful day so far. I know the time is still early, but you are alive. I am alive. And so the morning is good. God is good. And it's indeed a privilege and a joy to be alive. Now, I just want to welcome everybody this morning as we go to the Word together. Today is Saturday, February 10, 2024. The reading today comes to us from Daniel chapter 6, reading verse 1 to 22. It says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom an hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. Verse 2, And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Verse 3 Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. 4 Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion, nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. 5. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. 6. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king, and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. 7. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statue and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. 8. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which alter it not. 9. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his window being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day, and prayed, and gave thanks before his God, as he did aforetime. 11. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. 12. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that any man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which alter it not. 13. Then answered they and said before the king, that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regarded not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but make it his petition three times a day. 14. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. 15. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Now, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. 16. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. 17. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lord, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. 18. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither was instrument of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. 19. Then the king arose early in the morning, and went and aced unto the den of lions. 20. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel, 
And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lands? 21. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. 22 and last. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocence was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. And I say, Amen. Indeed, it's a privilege to always study God's word. And this morning reading is such a beautiful reading and an encouragement to us. We pray that the Holy Spirit will water our minds and fill us and empower us as we continue to study. Now, this story of Daniel is well known. Now, Daniel was among the captive that came from Jerusalem. He and his three friends, the three Hebrew boys. Now, after Nebuchadnezzar lost the kingdom to the Medes and the Persians, King Darius took over from him and he gathered some men together for his his cabinet so to speak so he had his counselors he had his wise men his captains and all of these people the wisest men in the kingdom he gathered them together for to attend to him but among all of these men he had daniel who was from the captive and he chose daniel to be the leader so to speak or the head over all the other wise men because he saw that there was something special about Daniel and so he wanted Daniel to serve him directly. This is what I love about God. God can promote you from any level. It doesn't matter where you are. God can make you rise to the top. And so Daniel was set in charge. But there are those among the others who were not pleased with that decision. Maybe they were thinking to themselves, how is this slavery boy, this captive, come to hold such a position above us to give us order? No man, we have to find a way to get rid of him man. This, this is not right. And how many of us today have had experiences like those? There are persons who think that we cannot be set as leaders over them or we cannot give them any direction because what we are less than they are in their mind or whatever reason they might think that we are not worthy to hold the position we hold and so they will try to fight us out of it anyway the story continues these men after they plotted and they did their research and they tried to find some fault against daniel they could not find any and sure enough, this was frustrating for them because they want to get rid of him. There's nothing in his life that will make that a reality. Because Daniel, he was a faithful Christian and also a faithful servant. He didn't allow power to corrupt him. He remained true to God and true to his integrity. It is interesting to note these men, they come together. All the princes, all the, the counselors. All the captains, everybody was there except Daniel. Wasn't Daniel the leader of the team? So how is it a lawmaking decision is being made? And the person who is leading the team is not there. Interesting. But you and I know the reason why he was not there. Because this was all a part of the plan. So they can't have him come into the meeting. So they made sure they planned the meeting behind his back. And so they went back to the drawing board and they came up with a brilliant plan they say okay then fine since we can't find any fault against him we just have to come up with one and so they decided that they were gonna go to the king and ask the king to pass a decree or a law that will prevent anyone from praying or asking any god or any man for anything except the king Listen, listen what they say you now. Any God or any man, they jot the man in there because they don't want it to seem, you know, too obvious what they're about. So they, so the man is just a, you know, it, it's not really the issue. But they want to strike at Daniel's faith. So public worship was banned. And private worship too. As a matter of fact, you were not supposed to do any form of worship or praying unless it's to the king only does this sound familiar this is serious 
Scripture tells us that he prayed three times a day. Daniel hearing that this decree was signed, it did not change him or phase him in any way, shape or form. He continued to prostrate himself before God three times a day. And so this particular day, he went up to his house and he opened his window towards Jerusalem as the reading said, and he began to pray. These troublemakers, they saw Daniel praying and they, they thought to themselves, yes man, we get him now. Yes, perfect, perfect time. And so they went to the king and they reminded the king, didn't you sign a decree that nobody should pray to any God or any man? So the king said, yes. And this is an unchangeable law according to our custom. And so they reminded the king of that. So now they say, okay then, well, we have a problem, you know, because Daniel, the man who you set in charge of us, he has no respect for you. And he doesn't respect the laws of the land. And he thinks that he is better than you and better than us. Or over where they want to twist it. I'm just paraphrasing using my imagination. Because you know how people think. When people is trying to bring down other people, they never say exactly what happened. They have to add a little bit more to make it more sweet and more juicy. So I imagine that these men, they probably spice it up so the king would get real angry. But anyway, they, they ratted out Daniel and said that Daniel was praying. And so when the king heard Daniel's name call, he was pricked in his heart. He, I imagine he probably almost fell off his throne because now he realized what is really happening. These men was out to get Daniel. So it wasn't anything to benefit the king per se. It was all a plot to get rid of Daniel because they didn't like the idea of Daniel being lord over them or having this position. But at this time when he realized what happened, it was too late because the reading says that the law of the time the Mede and the per Persian law was that if a decree is, is signed, it cannot be altered. Not so. And so he realized that he had to go through with the original plan. And the whole time, he tried to find a way out for Daniel, but he couldn't find any. And so he sent for Daniel and Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. And he, the king told him that, look here, man, you see the God that you serve, he will... He is able to deliver you and he will deliver you. Now that inspiration did not come off the king by himself. The Holy Spirit used the king to remind Daniel that look here man, I got you. You don't worry about it. And Daniel responded rightfully by, you know, letting the king know that yes, yeah man, God will deliver me. The king went back to his room. He was haunted all night. He couldn't sleep. He was tormented because Daniel was just on his mind. And he can't believe that this happened to Daniel or he allowed himself to fall for such a trap. And so early in the morning, he rushed to the, to the den and he called out to Daniel, Daniel, Daniel answered, did thy God deliver you? And he said, King, live forever. Indeed, the God that I serve delivered me because what? There was nothing wrong that I did. There was no fault against me. I did not do you anything. And I did not offend God. So he, clo so he closed the mouth of the lion and they did not harm me. And quickly he was taken from the den. And the story went on to say that after he was taken from the den, that his accusers were thrown in the den. And before they even hit the ground, the lion ripped them apart. And that is something to think about. I guess the lions were so hungry from not having anything to eat the night before. Because they couldn't eat Daniel. So they were on fasting all night. Now what is the moral or the point of the story this morning? The Lord has a way of protecting his own. This type of iron fist ruling will happen again. The time will come when they will prevent you. Prevent all of us. Those who are keeping the commandments of God. From freely worshipping God. And if we go against their ruling and still worship God, we will be persecuted. So the hand of the law of the land will come down on us heavily. It will happen again. As a matter of fact, we are experiencing small portion of it already. How many of you in your workplace today 
are being forced to go against your faith, to go against your consciences, to do things that you are not supposed to do or that you are not comfortable doing. And you are threatened that if you don't comply, you will lose your job or you will face consequences. Those of us, who, do, those who go to school, you are told that if you don't come in and do an exam on Saturday, they will fail you. So we are experiencing snippets of it already. But just keep in mind that God is watching over you. God will see you through and he will deal with things according to his wisdom. So don't worry yourself. Now Daniel was a stranger in Babylon. He had no friends, he had no families apart from those who came down with him in captivity. Being among this Eden nation, this new culture, he was put in a position where he can be a great influence to the Babylonian society. And so the Lord sometimes will put us in position of authority where we can make a difference. A lot of us are in position where we can have a greater impact, a greater impact than we are having right now. And sadly to know, a lot of us miss that opportunity because we misuse that position for our own selfish gain and desires. And so Daniel being placed in this position now obviously became a problem for a lot of his co-workers or his subordinate. And a lot of us can give a test to that too. Sometimes standing up for what is right, remaining steadfast in our faith will cause us dearly. We may lose our jobs. We may lose our families. We may be kicked out of school. We, we may be alienated and pushed out of society, so to speak, and look upon with scorn, all because we decide to stand up for God. That is the reality of all Christians and especially those who seek to keep the commandment of God. That's ultimately your faith. Satan is out to get you. Satan is out to get all those who stand up for God. But you know, this morning, I just want to encourage somebody that don't lose hope because the devil might be planning against you, but God is planning for you. And so don't be afraid to stand up don't be afraid to rise to the occasion when the lord call you just like daniel don't cover so don't hide away your 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 faith and the fact that you're a christian from those who you associate with let them know let them know you're not going to rub it in their face but be proud of who you are be proud of your identity the bible says that if we stand up for god that god will stand up for us and so I know some of us shy away from letting people know that we are Christian. So I know that we are experiencing all of these things. And so that is why I want to encourage you. Don't give up. When the enemy rises up against you like a flood, God is able to deliver you. Keep moving forward. Stand up. Hold on to Jesus because God will rescue you. He will save you. He will shut the mouth of the lion and he will deliver you. So as you go through today, may you think on these words. May you understand that you are special and that God has a special plan for your life. And he will build you up. He will rise you up. The Bible says that what? He will mount us up on the wings of eagle. We will walk and not faint. We will run and we will not be weary because the captain of the Lord's army is with us and so keep faithful and continue to run the race because one day you will receive a crown of life if you are faithful. Amen.